Hi friends, my name's Emma and let's talk spooky stuff. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another What I Watched This Month. It was a very strange month. I thought I hadn't watched a lot, but I was scrolling through before starting this video and there is a lot to get through, including some TV shows at the end as always. But before we get right into it, I do get asked a lot, how do I access all of this content? And a big part of it is thanks to today's sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, which stands for Virtual Private Network. Not only do they encrypt all of your data and keep your privacy online, but they also can unlock geo-blocked content. So say if there is a movie or a TV show that was only available in one country, Country, I can flip a switch and all of a sudden it's available for me to rent. I pay for my Surfshark subscription out of my own pocket, so I would not recommend something I totally don't love. If you do want to check out Surfshark, they have a 30-day risk-free money-back guarantee, so you can check it out. And if you aren't completely happy with the service, you can get your money back, no questions asked. If you do want to try it out today, use my code SPOOKY, and the link is in the description, and you'll get 83% off and three months extra for free. That's the code SPOOKY, and again, the link is in the description. Thank you so much much to Surfshark for sponsoring me and supporting creators like me on this platform. Okay, we're about to get straight into it, but before we do, dun dun dun, dun I am going to do a live stream this weekend to celebrate my 100 K achievement. If you'd like to come hang out with me live, we're gonna do a typical Q&A. We'll do some reactions, reacting to my first video ever, reacting to a highlights reel that one of my subscribers have made for me. I'm very excited, thank you Gus. And some other goodies, but basically it will be a casual hangout, so I'd love to see you there. Here are the times, and let's get into this video starting with movies. So of course, starting at the start of the month, I watched The Batman. Um, I'm not a fan of superhero movies. I'm sure you all know that, but I do watch all the Batman movies and I, I do love Batman. <laughs> I think Batman's cool and it's a little bit different to other superhero movies. I'm not huge into his lore, so I'm not gonna claim to be a mega fan, but I do like the whole, you know, gritty and gothic kind of atmosphere that is created in Batman movies. Um, and The Batman, I was really impressed with. I know. A lot of people are touch and go with this one, um, but I was highly impressed with the grit and I like how they incorporated, you know, um, England uh, and that architecture into it. I thought it was really fitting. Robert Patterson, the chin, um, he did great. Uh, and yeah, I think there was a lot of surprises. I really enjoyed how like there was so much more like detective work in this one. Uh, yeah, so I was a big fan of this one and I didn't really go into it expecting to be. I knew it was going to be good. I did know it was going to be good because I'd heard so many good things and usually with these kinds of films, straight out the gate, there's a huge reaction, um, immediate reaction to if it's okay or if it's great or if it's not good. And I had only heard positive things. So I knew if anything, it was going to be okay or like a good watch, but I came out of it thinking it was great. So that was really exciting. I watched Red Notice. <laughs> Don't ask me why. Uh, there's such a theme going throughout these videos. Every time I watch one of these movies, obviously I watch them with my partner. Was not a good movie. Uh, I don't even know what to say about that one. Don't bother. Um, it's on uh, Netflix. It's like an action. Don't even. Um, I watched Infrared. Um, this is a independent horror film um, that was <laughs> such a strange story, but it premiered here where I live and me and my friend Scott went and saw it. But basically the co-director is from Perth um, and it stars Greg from The Room. It was interesting. It was a lot better than I assumed it was going to be, which is, I hate saying that, but I'm going to be truthful. Uh, it is about, it's like the found footage of a uh, pilot episode of a paranormal investigation show. But they do some really interesting like uh, plot work with uh, the main character who's going to be this, you know, uh, presenter on the show. Um, him interacting with his sister that he's been estranged from and they kind of come together in this haunted location. So a lot of it, it's really interesting and they have something good going on there, but uh, when the paranormal stuff comes in, it's a little bit iffy. They did a live Q&A with uh, most of the cast and the directors uh, afterwards and I was kind of sad to hear that none of them were fans of horror films and they went and watched a whole bunch of horror films before doing this uh, and I felt like that made so much more sense after watching it. 
it uh, because it doesn't feel like it has that that heart and soul in horror and it feels like it's doing the stereotypical kind of scares um, where we know that's not really what like the core of horror is about. Twilight, if you haven't heard me say this before, I'll say it again. I'm so sorry if you have to keep hearing this because I've probably said it throughout a lot of my videos, uh, these wrap ups, but I have been watching the Twilight film slowly, very slowly for the first time ever. I do this on my Patreon because apparently people get a lot out of hearing me rage <laughs> on an audio commentary track. So I record myself watching them and then I release them as bonus episodes on my Patreon. People tend to like it. I don't know what it is. Um, and this was pretty much one of the worst films. <laughs> Did you see my review is just the clown? It's basically like the worst, one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Like hands down. I'm sorry. I know a few people who like it. That's totally, I mean, whatever. Um, but I mean, that is Batman to me. It's not a freaking Cullen. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I watched Fresh, which I did a review on. Really enjoyed that film. Uh, and yeah, check out the review if you would like to hear more. I, I watched No Exit. This is a film that really started with a lot of promise. Um, it is about a bunch of strangers who are kind of snowed into this location. The perspective you take is for one of the people there who's a woman and she she starts to sense that something is wrong with one of the people, but she can't figure out who it is, if that makes sense. I'm saying it in a very mysterious way. Uh, I really liked the whole like first half of the film, but I it just kind of lost me with the tension. Um, but I, I get what they were trying to achieve. It just didn't, I feel like it didn't pull it off as well as it could have. Um, and the acting was really great in it. Uh, I would recommend checking it out if you, I think it's on Disney Plus, I could be wrong. I would still recommend checking it out anyway, because it's just a easy going kind of thriller. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say it's anything completely special. I watched The Weekend Away. I believe this is on Netflix. Horrible film. So bad. <laughs> Someone gave it the three and a half. I mean, whatever. I thought this was horrendous. It was so... It's exactly what you thought was going to happen happened. Uh, it's about a woman who goes to... Um, she go, I forget what country she went to. She goes to Croatia um, to visit a friend and they rekindle, but then something goes off and then she disappears and she's stuck in Croatia. I don't, the whole thing was a mess and um, yeah, not something I'd recommend to you. <laughs> um, I watched Sinister and I did a video on this. Uh, and I hope now you all know my thoughts on Sinister. If you haven't checked that out, please do. I watched Drive My Car because obviously it was up for an Oscar and um, I wanted to know <laughs> what everyone was talking about. Of course, I enjoyed the film, but I did think it was long. I know that there are long films. Long films are totally valid I totally understand that but this film was three hours and um, I felt like halfway through like I could kind of see what it was trying to tell the audience or not even halfway through I would say towards the end I could see what they were trying to tell the audience but I felt like the road <laughs> drive my car, the road to get there could have been a little bit more smoother, quicker, more concise and would have kept the audience's attention and really driven home the point a little bit clearer but maybe they don't want a concise flow, maybe they want, you know, a, a series of thoughts, but I felt like they lost a bit of the meaning in the time they spent getting from A to B, literally. Uh, but I mean, definitely worth a watch. It's a different movie and it's very different to what I thought it was going to be about at like at all. So it's really nice when you can see something that's completely original. I also saw someone's take, I wish I remember who it was, on Twitter was talking about how platonic relationships, how the Oscars love platonic relationships and I totally disagree. But like how many love stories do we get compared to platonic relationships? <laughs> but I do like that about this film. Um, I watched Repo, the genetic opera. I've seen this so many times. I actually refuse to, as I said, how does one rate art? Um, I, you can't rate this movie. It is just, it's just something different. It's just different. It's nostalgia wrapped in a riddle, wrapped in complete nonsense. And I love every moment of it. If you have not seen it, it is a musical <laughs> about a reaper man who takes back people's organs if they don't pay up. <laughs> um, it is just this ridiculous kind of like cyber punk feeling madness. And yeah, the first time you ever watch it, you need to watch it with someone because it's very confusing. And um, it's just, it's just a fun 
group activity. It's not a solo date at all. <laughs> I watched Dreadstream. I watched this for part of uh, the South by Southwest Film Festival. Thank you to Rob for putting me onto this one. Um, and this one is very interesting. I think a lot of you guys will like this when it gets released. Um, it's basically uh, Evil Dead meets a YouTuber. <laughs> a YouTuber, it's like a... Um, found footage of them or a live stream of them going into a haunted house and uh it's a kind of like a comedy like satire-ish on him as a youtuber and that persona and you know how people get into it and doing stuff for views and all that kind of stuff and then obviously he encounters something in this haunted location it's pretty light-hearted it's not really like intense but the horror aspect is pretty good uh i would say it had it started off like a really good start and then by the end of it i was just kind of waiting for it to wrap up once you kind of like hit you could feel the peak was already done. There wasn't really much more or much places they could go with it. But I definitely think it's worth a watch. When it comes out, watch it. I think that people will love this film. I really do. For me, it was okay, but I can see other people really, really loving it. I watched Sissy. This is an Australian. Also, this was at the film festival, South by Southwest. Um, and this is a Australian film about a girl who's like rekindling her friendship um, with this girl, other girl who she went to primary school with. She gets invited to go and um, be with her and her friends for a weekend and uh, kind of realizes or you kind of understand why they separated and maybe it's better that they <laughs> weren't friends because it has to do with this traumatic experience. Loved this stylization and everything from the start. It's very slick, it's very fun. She's also like a um, social media influencer. So I felt like that was, I don't know, I like watching things like that because it's <laughs> relatable, but um, it's, I don't know, it's just interesting because it's like a different time, isn't it? And it's, uh, it's cool that they can kind of bring what's happening now into films and make fun of it and really pick it apart because it is true horror, you know? Uh, so yeah, I wish it would have been a little bit better, but it was very like low budget and um, I think that they did the best for what they could have done. I watched Under the Influence. I don't know where this picture is. I can't... Oh my gosh, I totally forgot what this was for a second. Again, um, at the film festival, <laughs> I watched Under the Influence, which is the David Dobrik documentary that uh, Casey Neistat did. If you don't know about any of the words I've just said, you're better off. You're better off. Um, but basically, this is the documentary that is was meant to blow apart um, David Dobrik's uh, image and... I think that there is good parts to it and there's bad parts to it and I don't think that it was as harsh as um, people thought it was going to be uh, but hopefully it drives the message home to some people who were were happy to kind of go through life um, you know trying to be ignorance is bliss to these kind of situations. I'm just going to leave it at that because if you don't know what I'm talking about you have no idea and if you do you'll understand what I'm saying but if you don't Please stay where you are. I would love to go there. I watched I Blame Society. I'm seeing a lot of trends of like social media in this. Oops, went one forward. Um, I Blame Society is a low budget horror film. This one is available on Tubi. Um, it is a interesting one, as I've said. This is a found footage again um, with this woman who is just unhinged, I would say. And um, she wants to be a filmmaker and she decides after hearing this statement about how good she would be as a killer, uh, that she is going to um, try and pursue that on film. Uh, it is a little bit, the message is a little bit convoluted and um, it kind of splits apart at, at times and I feel like it loses focus of like what the point is. Um, but that's kind of the fun of it because it is a little bit unhinged. I think for a, like it's pretty low budget um, film, it is really interesting and um, I really like this kind of style of filmmaking. It reminds me a lot of like Mark Duplass's original films. It's not like mumble, yeah, it kind of is mumblecore. It's like based on situations, especially for people in their, you know, like 20s or 30s. And um, it's more about, you know, you're seeing all of these uh, events transpire, but it's really saying more about that person and that person's personality and who that person is than they even realize. I hope that makes sense. That sounded very cryptic. <laughs> um, the next film I will, is a documentary series, but I did um, put it down in letterbox because I felt like it was more of a movie. There's a part one and part two, and it could just be like a long movie. Um, and yeah, I don't feel like it's a mini series. 
I mean, I, I'm gonna say this. Normally I say, you know, like make up your own mind in your comments, blah, blah, blah. If anyone says anything about this being incorrect information, I highly recommend you watch it first because evidence, it's right here, buddy. It's freaking right here. I have never watched anything so disturbing in my life. Um, I've, well, I've watched a couple of really disturbing things recently and they've all been documentaries. Uh, last month I talked about, I watched one about infiltrating Korea and we will get to something about that soon. Um, but this is the other thing that really, really disturbed me and kept me up at night and it's Phoenix Rising. This is Evan Rachel Wood's documentary about her naming Meryl Manson as her abuser. The content in this, I can't even explain. It is the most disturbing thing. I cannot believe the stuff they put in this film. I was expecting it to kind of glide over situations. It goes into full detail and it is the most disgusting thing I've ever heard of. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, just watch the documentary. I can't really explain the whole backstory, but basically it's leading up to her announcing to the world what happened to her. Um, and she was in relationship with Meryl Manson when she was 18 and he was 37. And um, there's a lot to it and it's important not only just for her to tell her story, but for people to realize how others can get in these situations that seem un, like, it's just like not on this earth. Like it doesn't seem logical or make any sense. Yeah, there's a lot to it. Sorry, I'm getting really passionate, but please, if you can stomach it, do watch this because it, it really blows your mind how evil humans are. Um, and this is the real horror. If you're into disturbing cinema, this is as far as it goes. Sorry, that is on HBO in America and it's on Binge in Australia. Um, I watched X. I've done a couple of videos on X. I, I don't think I have to cover that, but I've done a spoiler free video and I've done a spoiler video. I saw a couple of people recently, just quickly, sorry. I saw a couple of people recently in my comments talking about how they um, aren't big fans of the film and uh, you know, like everyone steered them wrong and said it was a masterpiece. I, I mean, that's always going to happen with, um, with cinema and especially with horror because horror is so particular to everyone's taste. Everyone, horror has so many subgenres, more, more subgenres than any genre, obviously, but there's just so many different categories. And yeah, I, I do feel like bad if it didn't work for you, but I guess that's like the name of the game. And hopefully there'll be something else out this year that you'll like more. Um, I saw Windfall. This was on Netflix. This I thought was going to be like a little bit more tense. I watched the trailer, just like the quick trailer on Netflix. And then I was like, okay, you know, I'll just chuck this on. I think it was like a Friday night. Um, it has a good cast. I liked everyone in this. Jesse Plemons, absolutely love him. Jason Segel and Lily Collins. I can take or leave. Like Emily, <laughs> Emily in Paris has scarred me deeply. Um, but yeah, I could take it or leave it. So uh, this one is about a couple who are gone to like their, one of their houses, their estates, like a vacation house. And when they get there, there's someone already in there and he pretty much ha holds them hostage. And it's this very strange film where they're kind of having conversations with him and they're living with him while he's trying to take their stuff. They're kind of like trapped in a situation where no one really knows the best way to get out of it and get out what they want. It has a very interesting conclusion, but I kind of just wanted something more to happen. I felt like the tension was really lost. And I think that that was the kind of the point of it is that they're living in this more drama situation when it should be very tense. I mean, there's a lot of different things that are discussed within this film because it is about really rich and fortunate people and you don't really know too much about the perpetrator and it's more about a discussion of how he how they relate to each other uh but it, I, I just didn't think it really worked for me unfortunately i would love to hear if you guys watched it and what you thought of windfall if you saw it i watched deep water this is one a couple of people wanted me to talk about uh, this is the new kind of um, thriller. It was meant to be like a girl gone kind of situation a lot of people were talking about. Um, released on Amazon Prime. I did not like this film. <laughs> or oh, I thought it, I gave it a two and a half because I thought it's not an awful film. It's not the worst film I've ever seen, but I, it did not, again, did not work for me. The whole thing of explaining this film is so bizarre. And if you've seen it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It is about this weird relationship between this couple um, and how she kind of uh, is open and he's more closed and what that means for, I can't really say anything. It's about their weird dynamic. They have a very strange relationship. I can't really say anything because I don't want to give away any of like the twists and turns, but I feel like there is very much less twists and turns that I expected or that I hoped for. Um, and it's more about the power dynamic between them, which is quite interesting, but it can be entirely frustrating. And I was probably more frustrated 
by this film than anything else. It was really funny after watching this to go on Twitter and just like read through the hashtag because everyone was like memeing the hell out of it because a lot of it is really hard to understand being in either of their shoes. I'm not saying either was right. It was, they're just both really fucked up to be honest. <laughs> um, I'd love to hear <laughs> what your thoughts on it are if you've seen it. I then watched uh, Breaking News in, is it Yaba country? County, sorry, Yaba County. Um, this is, was on Amazon, had an amazing cast list. Um, Alison Jenny, Mila Kunis, um, Regina Hall, Aquafina, Wanda Sykes. I love Wanda Sykes. Um, yeah, it had a really, really good uh, list. Look at it. It's even got Juliette Lewis. Um, and it is about a woman who... <sighs> <laughs> Again, how do I explain this? You go down the rabbit hole, there's this woman who's basically having people walk all over her all day and then she gets into this situation where she can finally like fight back and um, it's like a whole bunch of, it's like one of those films where it's like a whole bunch of crazy coincidences um, locked together, all of these characters in this very strange situation and it's kind of a comedy drama so it's not too serious, it's kind of funny and it's just meant to be like a coincidental kind of flick. I hope that makes sense. It was alright, I just wish there was a better payoff. I think that there was a lot going on for it but um, it didn't really go anywhere. I watched the 1977 Japanese classic House. I've seen this many times. I've spoken about it, I'm sure, before um, on my channel. Great film. If you want something that's bonkers, then that will take you out of this world and um, just let you, you know, float in the, in the ether for a little while. Definitely recommend. It is completely bonkers and I love it. I watched it with my patrons, so that was really fun to watch in a group setting. I watched Master. This is a one that a couple of people were talking about. I think it was on Amazon, I want to say. Um, so I really wanted to check this one out. Uh, it is a very interesting subtext because I didn't really realize what it was m telling me until the final part, which is definitely on... Uh, I don't know if that's on my my end or if that's on that's like the reveal of it. Um, very interesting film. So it's about a new school headmaster who moves into this elite college kind of sitch, and uh, she is kind of faced with all of these microaggressions against a black student. I mean, to be honest, it's about three different black women who are going through these experiences in that environment. Um, and it does kind of like switch between whose uh, perspective it goes through. Uh, but it's like about believing their story and believing if there's something more or not. Um, yeah, it's a very interesting watch. The perspectives in it is, it's pretty amazing actually. And uh, I like that they confined it to just that situation because it just amplifies everything. But it's not what you think at the same time. It is a very like mysterious movie. I would say it is a horror mystery. Um, the mystery is what kept me really glued to it. Um, yeah, it's a very disturbing watch. I do recommend it though. Uh, I watched Every Breath You Take. Lowest score for the dead giveaway of the twist in the first 10 minutes. That's right. Um, this one, I think it was on like Amazon or something. It was just an easy thing to flick on. And then I kind of was upset with myself for the rest of the evening, week, month, year. Uh, <laughs> this movie has a twist. Well, is it a twist? I mean, it's this... <sighs> Take a breath. Um, the movie is about a psychologist who deals with a woman, um, who's going through something and then uh you know like she's gone through trauma and something happens to her and um he becomes close with her family and um from there like things take like a dark twist it's very obvious what's happening <laughs> i don't think that there is a twist in this it's meant to be twisty i just could not believe within the first 10 minutes i knew exactly how the film was going to end like what is the point i'm into sinister dark stalking kind of movies but I mean, I, and I don't think that's a giveaway because it's called Every Breath You Take, but I was just really, really disappointed by that. Um, yeah, it seemed like a Lifetime movie to me, uh, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but yeah. Um, I watched Off Season, which I did a review on, if you'd like to check it out. It's a horror movie that, ever, like, no one's talking about it and it um, just came out. Um, I watched Shut In. Oh, I can't talk about this one, actually. That's why I haven't scored it. Um, this one is held for embargo, so I'll talk about it in, like, two months' time when it's actually coming out. Um, I watched X again at the cinema. Um, and then I watched The Exorcism of Emily Rose and Saint Maud. Again, these are rewatches. I love 
both these films for very different reasons. If you haven't seen The Exorcism of Emily Rose, I highly recommend checking it out. It is a chilling horror movie. Not many horror movies give me nightmares. This one does. I get, I have so many nightmares every time I think about this movie. Um, it is uh, based on a true life case that happened in Germany and it is about a woman who uh, is going through, well, a woman who's passed and her life is going through like this court case to see if um, she could have been helped by medical attention or if she should have been exercised, which is what happened to her. That's the, that's the very short version, but it is a grueling watch, terrifying, absolutely terrifying. And then of course, St. Maud, I've spoken about this a lot on my channel. I love St. Maud. Um, this is a UK horror film by Rose Glass uh, about a woman who is a carer and um, she believes that God is speaking to her and wants her to save her patient. It is unhinged and you should definitely watch it if you haven't. I'm sure you've heard about it by now. Um, again, let's get a little bit more heavy before we get back to the horror. I'm just gonna talk about one more heavy. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. So, we need to talk about this, we really do. Uh, so I said that I've, I've watched a couple documentaries recently. I'm not normally this, you guys know, I keep things real light here. Um, but we do talk about dark cinema now and then, and this is one of an, another documentary that really disturbed me. This is a Stan original, so I don't know if you can find it overseas. Hopefully you can. Um, Stan is an Australian streaming platform. So basically there was a 60 minutes, you know, 60 minutes that happens in every, like most countries have a 60 minutes. I don't know if you knew that. Um, and in Australia, they had one that was about the problem with neo-Nazis in um, the country and uh, this is the documentary behind how they obtained that information. It has live cam footage of people going to, you know, barbecues and speaking, all of that kind of stuff. It's very graphic content, very um, orchestrated, organized, terrifying. I can't, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a panic attack talking about this to be honest. Um, if you can watch it, I really recommend it because it tells the story of how organized crime comes to be and how people are brainwashed and put into these situations. And I think for that, it's not just this whole thing where like, let's watch this to be shocked. It really does teach you how um, this influences people in our society to think these ways and um, follow these kinds of groups. And it's just, we're gonna move on. <laughs> it's just a lot. Um, Oh, sorry guys, I didn't mean to get emotional. Okay, we wa I watched Unsane and this is a rewatch. I love Unsane, it's one of my favorite films of 2018. Um, and I did a live stream with my friend Felicia on Girly Gore, where we talked about the film. If you wanna go check it out, her channel is Girly Gore. I'll leave a link down below. She does a weekly horror movie club where she does these streams and talks about particular films. She has amazing laid back style. She's such a cool chick, one of my friends. And yeah, I highly recommend her content if you're into relaxed horror content um, where you can get into the nitty gritty and it's just like hanging out with someone in their house while you talk about movies. I love that kind of stuff. After that I watched the new Irish folk film You Are Not My Mother. I did talk about this in What's Coming to VOD this month. Highly recommend. Really good watch. Um, it is an independent horror movie so just keep that in mind. The budget's not like up there but it's still amazing for what it is. Um, so it basically follows a mother and daughter relationship uh, as something happens to her mum and her mother disappears and then she comes back and she's not quite the same. Um, but it is really interesting the perspective they took from the younger girl who is um, this outcast and she's being bullied and yeah, it's just really interesting the, the approach they took into it. Uh, I would recommend it. I did think it was scary in parts. Usually it doesn't get to me these days as much, but it definitely um, made my skin crawl a little bit. Just the way they put entities and stuff in there, I think is really clever. And then another film I really wanted to watch so I could talk to you guys about it was All My Friends Hate Me. This was another movie I talked about in my What's Coming to VOD this month. Um, I did want to clarify for you, when I add films to those lists, obviously I haven't seen them yet and uh, I do take their marketing and what they, you know, generalize it as, where they sort it in the genre map quite seriously and they did call this like a horror thriller um, but it is definitely more of a drama I would say with like a little bit of thrilling aspects but if anything I would call it like an anxiety <laughs> um, kind of tension film and I did really enjoy this but it was more because of the the building anxiety it really got to me uh, and when films are effective like that no matter what the content is I'm just so impressed but it is like a funny 
look at society and the way we worry about um, how we're perceived by others. And for that, I thought it was really effective. The acting in it is superb. The location, the setting, everything I loved about it. It's like a UK film about a guy who goes to spend uh, the weekend with his old pals and uh, he just doesn't feel like, he feels like they're picking on him. And it's these little moments that you're just not sure if they're messing with him or if he's in the wrong and it keeps going back and forth and it's just a really interesting film. If you are into, you know, that anxiety, cringy element, um, watching people kind of unravel in um, these really awkward situations, highly recommend it. So that's all of the movies. Let's get into TV. I finished Station Eleven. I did talk about this last month, but I finally finished like the last couple of episodes and I did want to come back just to, you know, check in with you all and say absolutely worth the ending. The ending, I, I, I've never done this before. I rewound it. <laughs> Can you rewind? I you know, I flicked back on, on my remote on my TV. I think maybe five times to watch the reveal because I just needed it so bad. Um, yeah, really emotional, really well done and definitely worth sticking it out for. It's a bit of a slower series if you weren't here last month. It's like a sci-fi drama about a group of people who are stuck together in um, this dystopian time um, after, you know, a pandemic has sweeped the nation, not the nation, the world. And um, it's about the story of a, a young girl who at the start of it and where she ends up because of it. And this story, this um, comic book kind of thing called Station Eleven that links her to her future and her past. And it's, oh wow, it's really, really well done. It's based on a book and um, I've heard that they are very different to each other, but I'm really glad how they wrapped up the TV show. It was really good. I've started watching The Dropout. I'm up to episode four. This is the um, drama TV show based on a true story about Elizabeth Holmes who uh, made this device um, that was meant to be this medical, you know, this huge thing in the medical industry and uh, how it was all kind of funded and um, a fraud really. Yeah, it, it took people's investments and really didn't produce anything. Amanda Seyfried plays Elizabeth and she does an amazing job. I, I really like her anyway, but uh, yeah, very interesting. It's a very strange look into that world and I definitely see it from a different perspective now which I guess is the point of the TV show. I did also watch Bad Vegan which is the mini series that is on Netflix. I don't really like the title because it has nothing to do with them being vegan but it is about a woman who gets involved with this guy who um yeah is it's just it's the most insane story and if you do watch it stop trying to make sense of it just go with it basically they own this restaurant and um well, she owns this restaurant and she gets involved with this guy who completely just starts controlling her life it really reminded me of phoenix rising in some elements but uh yeah it, i think it was just because i watched them so close together it is a very wild ride and it's really interesting for netflix because netflix they normally really um, you know, keep the storyline steady and really try and move the viewer and l let them believe certain things at certain times. This one, there's just so much information. It feels like information overload and it's very confusing. Uh, so you just, <laughs> just breathe and take it all in if you do watch it. I do recommend it if you're into, you know, true crime. And then the last one, which I'm kind of ashamed of and I'm sad that I'm leaving you on this note, I watched Byron Bay's. <laughs> I just had to... I, I didn't have to, I'm lying. Of course I didn't have to, but I put it on in the background and then I just was so glued to it. It is a Netflix uh, reality TV show about Byron Bay and people who are moving there and if they make it in Byron Bay or not. Being from Australia, it's hilarious because these people think that they are like, that Australia like bows down to Byron Bay when that is not the case at all. But um, it is really interesting and fun and just silly. Overproduced reality series. If you're into that kind of fun trash, check it out. Okay, thank you so much for sticking with me through this video. What a roller coaster. My brain has been all over the place this month and you can see why my viewing <laughs> selection is is varied. I'm sure like you at home, you know, sometimes you want something light, sometimes you want something heavy, and uh, I, I got it all. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching this video. If you do want to subscribe, I'd love to have you here, and I'd love to see you at my 100k live stream. I can't wait for it again here are the times, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Let me know what you watched down below, and if you have any recommendations for me, I love seeing them, and I'll talk to you all very soon. Stay safe and stay spooky. Bye friends. Mm -hmm.